Hi, good morning. This is a complex analysis. We are going to new start a new series of lectures on Lorentz series. First one or two lectures we will have the preliminaries instead of directly getting into Cauchy internal formula for annulus and the Lorentz series etc. as is the usual case in many textbooks and authors. Okay. So let us get started without to wait is wasting too much of time. The first thing is suppose I have a sequence A minus N where N equal to 1 to infinity. That is something like A minus 1 plus A minus 2 plus A minus 3 etc. I want to talk about its convergence. This is also an infinite series except instead of indexing with you know, natural numbers we are indexing with the negative numbers right but its convergence is very easy simply to, let, let's define b n equal to some a, a minus n then let's look at b k k equal to 1 to n yes this is nothing other than a minus 1 plus a minus n which is also b1 to b n therefore i say this is convergent if Yes, and converge to some number is in that case I will simply write minus a n n equal to infinity as yes. Okay, this is just a cheating instead of writing a one a two a three or writing a minus one a minus two a minus three. There is nothing more, right? So just understand this is this is not very important, very easy to be expected. But what is important is something like this. Suppose I have something like c minus n z minus a to the power minus n where n equal to 1 to infinity. This we call a power series with negative powers. Okay. Negative powers series. See, I think of this single word. A power series simply means z minus a to the power n. Negative power series means z minus a to the power minus n, where n is a natural number. Okay, negative power series. I want to talk about its convergence. Okay. So for any fixed z, okay, fix z, then it's an ordinary thing. This is something like c minus n, z minus a to the power minus n so if you fix something like say z equal let's say alpha if you want that is going to be c minus n alpha minus a to the power minus n and call this as d minus n then you know what is meant by convergence right but there is a much better way of looking at it that is let us look at w equal to 1 upon z minus a which is z minus a to the power minus 1 then this series negative power series c minus n z minus a to the power minus n 1 to infinity i can rewrite as c minus n w to the power n okay if you want to write it as c n okay that's the reason why you won't usually write c n instead of minus n simply write c n okay i hope i'm not confusing I am saying instead of writing this let me write it as c minus a to the power minus n and then therefore I can write it as c n w power n 1 to infinity. Okay. My c n is what I denote by c minus n. So that this will look at. Okay. And I know what is meant by convergence of this power series. So we know that there exists R okay, so that when our mod w is less than r this series c n w n is convergent and this is called the disk of convergence right yeah so now let us look at then suppose Ah, okay. C n w power n converges on B zero R. Let us assume R is positive because when R is zero there is nothing to interesting. So let us assume R is positive, right? Then this defines a function. 
we know this is the power series function C n sorry C w C n w power n 1 to infinity and if you want power series to start with z, 0 then you write c0 equal to 0 right therefore it will be c0 into z minus a to the power 0 plus c1 into z minus a to the power minus 1 etc that's the series right so this we know it's a holomorphic in fact we know it's analytic we already proved directly it's analytic we also saw any holomorphic function is analytic because of Cauchy theory anyway so this is analytic this is g of w right now let's look at okay therefore if i put r equal to 1 by r okay mod w is less than 1 sorry less than r if and only if 1 by mod z minus a is less than r that is if and only if mod z minus a is greater than 1 by r let us call it capital r right therefore okay what we say is this fellow cm z minus a to the power minus n, n equal to 1 to infinity is convergent if mod z minus a is greater than r so this set set of complex numbers is that mod z minus a greater than r this is a domain of convergence or just for fun you can also call it disk of convergence disk of convergence for the negative power series is that clear to all yeah right now the since this is conversion then let us write f of z equal to summation c n z minus a to the power minus n n equal to infinity then we have g of w equal to c n w power n where w equal to 1 by z minus a which we define phi of z to be 1 of on z minus a z, sorry z minus a equal to w w equal to phi of z equal to 1 upon z minus a right the question is what is the relation between g and f that's very easy because f of z is nothing other than g of phi of z that is g composite phi of z okay this is clear yeah now let's look at phi where is it defined okay so let us look at the domain uh, let me call it d as a domain z in c so that mod z minus a is maybe i'll call it uh, yeah greater than r okay so five maps d onto the disk b0 r yeah because phi of z is 1 upon z minus a that's less than r that means mod z minus sorry mod z minus a yeah yeah that's correct okay z is less than z is greater than z minus a is greater than r that means phi of z is modulus is less than r yeah so this maps this z2 1 by z minus a right it this is holomorphic on d okay i hope this is clear to all yeah right therefore we know f from d to c defined by f of z is nothing other than we know this is equal to g composite phi of z okay therefore this is holomorphic and hence analytic not r and and hence analytic on the domain d 
So notice that this means this if this is A, this is BA or then our domain is this, everything outside this. This is our D. Okay. This is for homomorphism. Right? Okay. Next thing we know that if my zero less than or less than rho, then I know my power series G of W equal to summation C and W power N on to infinity. This is uniformly convergent on any B0 rho where rho is less than or. Right? So th this translates into into my f of z equal to summation c n z minus a to the power minus n n equal to 1 to infinity this is uniformly convergent here if what I want I want mod w should be less than rho that means mod z minus 1, 1 upon mod z minus a should be less than rho that means mod z minus a should be greater than 1 by rho. Remember, rho is less than r, therefore 1 by rho is greater than 1 by r. Right? That means, just assume that my a is 0, so that my life will be easy to do. So, this is my b0, b0 r, right? Then, this is my B A R one where R one is is one by R sorry. My R one is greater than R, then this series C N Z minus A to the power minus N equal to infinity is uniformly convergent on where on the set Z so that mod Z minus A is greater than R one where R one is fix R one greater than R. So, pause, review, proceed. Okay. So, quickly summarize what have you found? If the way to deal with C and Z minus A to the power minus N convergence is uh, looking at C and W power N where W equal to pi of Z which is equal to 1 upon Z minus A. If rho is there, this rho correspond to R which is 1 by R, where assume R is positive, right? Then we found that this is convergent, where on mod Z minus A greater than R, and uniformly convergent on mod Z minus A greater than R1, which is greater than R. Okay, these are the things we had all seen. And we also know that if this is G of W, and this is f of z on the domain d this is our domain d okay then my f of z is nothing other than g composite phi of z these are the facts we have seen and hence the f is holomorphic right very good the next question i want to ask is since it's holomorphic we want to know what is f dash z but by chain rule tells us it is g dash of phi of z into phi dash of z right and phi of z is 1 upon z minus a therefore phi dash of z is minus 1 by z minus a whole squared right now what is g of w g of w is summation c n w power n and since the convergent power series on B A B zero R, we know that for every W here, G dash is W is given by N C N W power N. Sorry, this is yeah. One to infinity. Do all of you agree with that? Therefore, now let's plug this in. Therefore, f dash of z equal to 
g dash of phi of z into phi dash of z th that means g dash of this is going to be summation n c n uh, oh, sorry this is w power n minus 1 okay w power n minus 1 is going to be 1 upon z minus a to the power n minus 1 into phi dash of z okay this whole thing into 1 upon minus 1 upon z minus a whole square okay n equal to 1 to infinity notice that this is true for each and every z where for each z which is belongs to the domain d domain is right so for a fixed set that this is a conversion infinite series this for a fixed set this is a number therefore you remember that if a n is conversion and c is a constant then c times a n is conversion which is same as c times a n okay i'm using that therefore this i can write this f dash of z is going to be n equal to 1 to infinity the, this minus n comes minus n c n into 1 upon z minus a to the power this is n minus 1 plus 1 therefore n plus 1 yeah but that is nothing other than minus n c n z minus a to the power minus n minus 1 where n equal to 1 to infinity so we found a formula for that notice that we are guaranteed this infinite series converges because this infinite series converges okay this infinite series okay converges in b 0 r and we had already seen uh, by using our phi the corresponding series in the domain d that also converges okay remember we are doing analysis not simply manipulating symbols okay this series converges just make sure that you follow my argument okay but what is something interesting about this something interesting happens why because f of z is summation c n z minus a to the power minus n n equal to 1 to infinity therefore if i do term wise differentiation okay purely formally then what do i get i get that is equal to i get n c n z minus a to the power minus n minus 1 right but that's exactly this therefore this is got by term wise differentiation and notice that this is exactly what happens in the positive power series remember that when i have something like c n z power n or with uh, some disk of conversion b0 r then yeah call this if you want g of z then g dash of z is n c n z power n minus 1 we had already known that so this is exactly analogous to that okay appreciate this this is something wonderful yeah right next question i can ask is remember again recall if suppose i have a power series let me assume that is a power series is g of w equal to c n w power n it's a radius of disk of conversion is b0 r then we have a primitive okay we found the primitive was suppose I define capital G of W to be C n by n plus 1 W to the power n plus 1 n equal, n equal to okay 0 to infinity yeah then this is conversion and G dash of W is G of W since this is conversion power series in this disk of conversions term wise differentiation gives this all these things we have seen in our lectures on power series okay now rec recall unlike many textbooks 
only after Cauchy and Darrell formula they talk about power series expansion, Taylor expansion. We started our complex analysis course with power series. And that's why we distinguish two things, holomorphic functions and analytic functions. And finally, Cauchy theory proved they are the same. Appreciate these things. Okay, it's not just calculation. It's something fantastic, conceptual understanding. Okay. Now I can ask, does there exist a primitive for negative power series? That is, I am given C n z minus a to the power minus n n equal to one to infinity. This is my f of z and assume that this converges in mod z minus a greater than r. Okay, we, this is our assumption. Suppose it has, suppose there exists an fz which is equal to let us say dn z minus a to the power or let me write uh, dk z minus a to the power minus k, k equal to 1 to infinity. Okay, and this is z in d. Suppose uh, there exists a primitive f. Okay. Since this converges in the domain, we know just now we saw then f dash z is nothing other than k minus k dk z minus a to the power minus k minus 1 k equal to 1 to infinity. This must be equal to f of z. That means this must be equal to cn z minus a to the power minus n n equal to 1 to infinity. Do all of you agree with that? Therefore, let us compact, okay, compare the coefficients of like powers. Let us say z minus a to the power minus n. Okay. For for f on the f side, it is C n on the capital F side it is so what do I want? I want this one that is minus k minus 1 should be equal to minus n. This must be z minus a to the power minus n, right? Therefore that means my n must be equal to k plus 1. Do all of you agree with that? No, rather my k I am interested in what finding the k, k minus 1 equal to this, therefore k equal to bring it to that side n minus 1. I hope I did correctly, k goes to that, n goes to the minus n goes to this, right? Right? Therefore that's going to be, I did, I hope I did correctly, I did not do any mistake. Yeah, minus k minus 1 must be equal to this, therefore k must be equal to I think I must have done a mistake. Let me make sure. Dk minus k goes to minus k minus 1. Therefore, minus k minus 1 equal to minus n. That means k plus 1 equal to n. Therefore, k equal to n minus 1. I think it likes, it looks correct. Let me assume that. Therefore, it's going to be dk. So, dk must be, k must be equal to n minus 1. Therefore, it's n minus 1 d n minus 1 right that's it therefore my c n equal to this therefore c n equal to n minus 1 into d n minus 1 right now let's look at the first term c1 okay that is c1 to the power a minus 1 there are a lot of other things, right? Let us concentrate on that. Therefore, my C1 must be equal to n minus 1, okay? That is 0 into D0. Okay, but this is equal to 0, all right? So, if C1, that is the coefficient of z minus a to the power minus 1 is non-zero, we have problem.
okay because if the primitive exists that shows c1 must necessarily be zero right therefore you can see so it this is the observation so in the negative power series the term the coefficient of z minus a to the power minus 1 seems to play an important role right those of you who had already gone through some complex analysis course you will recognize it is the residue of f at a etc residue of f at a but those who have not seen don't worry about but keep this observation in mind okay we will tie it up later okay now before go completing this lecture let us look at something one more thing suppose now i have a series of the form let us say a n n is minus infinity to plus infinity that means i have something like this that is okay infinite series both ways two sided both sides it goes now i want to talk about this convergence when do i say when do i say it is convergent but that's very easy what is a very natural way of doing write it as minus infinity to minus 1 of am plus a n n equal to 0 to infinity right this series we write it as this then i say this is conversion if and only if this is conversion and this is conversion and suppose this converges to let us say s1 and this converges to s2 then i define the sum of this series an minus infinity plus infinity equal to s1 plus s2 that is the sum of the series am minus infinity to minus 1 plus an 1 0 to infinity you can also write minus 1 to infinity of a minus m plus 0 to infinity of a n do you understand this yeah now try to understand this so since i did s1 etc i am going to run a problem because when i want to use partial sums i cannot use something so let me call this as okay for the time being let me call sigma m to be the power series of this uh, let me say u u m to be the partial sums of a minus k k equal to 1 to m v m to be the partial sums of a k k equal to 0 to m if you want u n yeah this is v n equal to 0 to n a k yeah then what do i know is u m goes to s1 and v n goes to s2 this is as m goes to infinity and this goes to n goes to infinity right so we want to look at uh, what we want to do we want to arrive at some Cauchy criterion okay which is very rarely used but let's do it because there is some small point which I would like to clarify okay therefore okay the, this series minus infinity to plus infinity a n is convergent okay if and only if for a very epsilon positive there exists n okay okay just before that let me say this as usual given epsilon okay take epsilon by 2 there is n1 so that mod um minus s1 is less than epsilon by 2 there is n2 so that mod vn minus s2 is less than epsilon by 2 
take n equal to maximum of n1 and n2 etc. These are all the standard Reliance trick. You all know the reason said so that for every m and n greater than equal to n, that is m should be greater than equal to n and n also greater than equal to n. Then let us look at a minus m plus a minus m plus 1 plus a minus 1 plus a 0 plus a n minus of s1 plus s2. This is less than epsilon. Why? Because this fellow is less than or equal to a minus m plus a minus m plus 1 plus a minus 1 minus s1 plus a0 plus an minus s2 but that's equal to sorry right is equal to but that's less than or equal to use triangle inequality minus m plus a minus m plus 1 plus a minus 1 minus s1 plus this one but this is your um minus s1 and this is your vn minus s2 that's less than epsilon by 2 plus epsilon by 2 less than epsilon okay so if the two-sided infinity is converges then we have a number okay we have some number call this as yes okay now this suggests okay the following criterion if there exists a complex number c so that for a very epsilon positive there exists n a natural number so that for every m and n greater than equal to n modulus a minus m modulus a minus m plus 1 and so on whatever I wrote a n minus s is less than epsilon this is an if only if okay if it is conversion we found this my if this is good are you following this result so if summation a in is conversion okay then we took s equal to s1 plus s2 and proved this result just now seen okay so we have to prove the converse so if i want to prove the converse what am i given i am given there exists sir see this is what i am given now this is a hypothesis now i have to prove this to prove right so that means what i have to prove summation a minus m m equal to 1 to infinity and summation a m 0 to infinity this both are conversion so keep the our earlier notation um is the partial sums of this vn is a partial sum therefore i have to show um converges and vn also converges to some s1 and, and s2 right you have to prove that right okay how do i prove that notice that there is no way i can find s1 directly i want to say when this converges the partial sums are um i want to say find an s1 like this that may not be possible but analysis teaches us in easy way what does it say it says that it's enough to show um and vn are cauchy right now that's very easy so you give me an epsilon positive right and therefore I know there exists an n positive said so that whatever I wrote uh, let me write this is less than epsilon okay because it's this is the hypothesis right now what I do is fix capital N if you want epsilon by 2 okay keeps capital N then let's look at in particular minus a m minus 1 
plus a minus m plus 1. Let me write it simply as this u of m okay I wrote it plus now you simply write it v of n capital N minus s is less than epsilon by 2. This is for every m greater than equal to n. The trick is I am not allowing this n to where I am fixing a capital N. Do you follow that? For that matter any small n greater than capital N will also do. Right? And now I know how to do that. So suppose I have some other since I had already used to capital N small n etc. Suppose I have also given an n greater than equal to n. Let us look at I want to show um minus un less than epsilon. This is what I want to show. But that's very easy. This is the usual algebra now. So this I can write as um plus vn minus s okay minus un plus b capital N minus s okay this is my um minus un right but that's less than or equal to this object plus this object but each is less than epsilon by 2 therefore it's epsilon therefore um is Cauchy therefore um converges to some s1 and similarly vn is Cauchy it converges to some s2 right that's enough for us but we actually make a more interesting claim then s must be equal to my s1 plus s2 now that I found s1 and s2 I want to say the limit is unique that is also very easy the standard uniqueness result will prove okay okay modify the standard uniqueness of the limit limit of a convergent sequence to show s is s1 plus s2 okay so again do that s1 plus s2 minus s you want to show is less than epsilon for every epsilon positive right now you go back there is an n1 there is n2 and there is an n n for this series Cauchy criterion for the uh, two sided partial sums this is a criterion n1 is the Cauchy criterion for s1 and this is a criterion for second series etc right then uh, maybe you call it n3 for this are you following me yeah u m minus s n and this is v n minus s2 and this is u m plus v n minus s okay n1 n2 n3 take n equal to maximum n1 n2 n3 and manipulate the symbols you will get if you want make it a epsilon by 3 or something whatever it is epsilon by 3 epsilon by 3 epsilon by 3 etc then you will get the result okay this is an exercise as I keep saying, you are all MSc students, you should be able to do it on your own. In fact, I shouldn't have even given this. So, that is the preliminaries which I wanted to talk about two sided numerical number series summation Cn, n running from minus n to plus infinity, that one. And, uh, and the first major portion, what we do, we looked at negative power series summation cn z minus a to the power minus n where n runs from 1 to infinity then we proved various results okay what are the single trick single trick is transform the given negative power series into a positive power series by mapping w equal to 1 upon sorry w equal to phi of z where phi of z equal to 1 upon z minus a and turn it into ordinary power series and go back and forth this is very easy except okay people only simply algebraically manipulate and live it and students want to believe such things but we went through the proofs very rigorously it's always good to do such things if your conceptual understandings are very clear you will not be confused okay I hope all of you enjoyed this okay there is one more preliminary 
okay it's not actually preliminary it's part of the first step towards okay the cauchy internal formula for an annular region we will talk about it in the next session okay take care stay safe we'll meet again